What's up guys, Pastor Brad Smith here. Go ahead, do me a favor and ring that bell, subscribe to this channel, and go ahead and throw a like on this video and comment where you're listening from. Listen, today you're in for a treat. We are going to talk about what the Bible says about speaking in tongues. You know, the truth is the teaching going around about speaking in tongues is very controversial. Depending on who you ask, some people say it's demonic. Some people say people who speak in tongues are crazy. Or maybe there are a group of people who say, you know what? The gifts of the Holy Spirit are no longer for today. Today, in this brief video, I want you to watch it to the end because in just a few moments, I'm going to cover how speaking in tongues is actually biblical. But first, let's look at the purpose. The first thing we need to cover today is this, is that speaking in tongues is primarily practiced by a group of people who are Christians who go by the label Pentecostals. There are other groups who are charismatics or non-denominationals who practice the art or the gift of speaking in tongues, but the truth is is that this is not just a denominational thing. When you look in the Bible, uh, particularly in the book of Acts, Jesus had commissioned his followers to go to Jerusalem and to wait until the Holy Spirit was poured out. This would signal him empowering the church to be a witness of the message of the resurrection. So in Acts chapter 2, it's recorded that these disciples met in Jerusalem, 120 of them, in a small upper room in Jerusalem. They began to pray, and they were in one accord. And as they prayed, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 records that as they were all in one place in one accord, there came a sound from heaven. It was like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues. They literally began to speak in languages that they had never learned before. Now, as they went down into the street where the Jerusalem festival was happening, where they were celebrating the Feast of Harvest, the Bible says that people who heard them began to say things like, these are crazy people, they are drunk. You know, the truth is people are still saying that about Pentecostal spirit-filled people today, that they're drunk or they're crazy. But Peter, uh, somebody who was once a zealous, cussing, Christ-rejector, Christ-denier, speaks up and he says, these are not drunk as you suppose, being but it's just the ninth hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. That's literally what happened as the Holy Spirit came down and filled these believers and pushed them out into the street. My friends, the Bible says that this is the inception and the conception of the church, literally the birthday of when the church began. From this point forward, we see them going into houses, they're meeting, they're baptizing. And then in other instances, like in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 9, uh, we see Acts chapter 19, various instances where people are filled with the Holy Spirit with this uh, phenomenal thing, uh, this sign of tongues, just like the other people were. So we have to ask ourselves a question, is tongues just a denominational thing or is it a Bible thing? The truth is, my friend, speaking in tongues is a Bible thing. The churches that were formed in the New Testament, they were spirit-filled, speaking with other tongues people. So first of all, number one, they weren't crazy. The second thing we have to ask is, since it's such a taboo thing, why did God choose tongues? After all, he could have chose prophecy. He could have chose holy laughter. He could have chose any type of sign to be the accompanying sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So why did he choose tongues? I'm glad you asked. Well, up until this point, it's very clear. The scripture says that Jesus came to his own and his own did not receive him. It's also testified of the woman who came to receive healing of Jesus. And Jesus said, uh, it's not meat for, for us to give what's holy to the dogs. And the woman said, but yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. And uh, the scripture plainly says that Jesus came to the Jews, but yet the Jews didn't receive him. The day of Pentecost was a, a picture 
that the gospel of Jesus Christ was now available to every tribe, kindred, and tongue. That is the first reason why God allowed them to speak in a language that they had never heard. It was a sign to the unbeliever and to the people that the gospel was now available to everybody. The second reason is that the book of James records that the tongue is a small member. It's a very, very small, untamable member. And it says that men can tame uh, horses and with the little bitty bits in their mouths, or they can tame a ship and turn it with a rudder, but a man cannot tame his tongue. So one of the reasons why tongues, the sign of tongues, speaking in a language, yielding to the Holy Spirit at baptism and allowing them to fill you with a language you've never heard before, the reason why that is so significant is because it is yielding your most unruly member to God. So here we go. Let's recap. It is a sign that the gospel has been opened up to the nations of the world. And number two, it is a yielding of your most unruly member. So listen, here's what we have to understand. Tongues is not just a denominational thing. Tongues is in fact a Bible thing. And number two, the reason why he had them to speak in tongues is because uh, he wanted it to be a sign to those around. Now listen, if you're curious about how you receive this experience, go ahead and like this next video and I'll tell you how. God bless you guys.